Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Marvel 1-6 scale figure unboxing and retro review. Today we are taking a look at none other than the Black Panther from his solo movie. Now, to celebrate the release of Wakanda Forever and to honor the late Chadwick Boseman, I thought, hey, now's as good a time as any to get this guy back out here and do a re-review. Now, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. This is my second copy, and to save a bit of coin, I went pre-owned. Now, I have popped the link for that in the description below. They do have installment plans and a reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, the box itself is taller than usual, and that's thanks to the special LED light unit that we'll be discussing a little bit later. Down below, the Black Panther movie logo in a high gloss finish, which Contrasts nicely with the rest of the packaging, that's a matte finish. Front and center, T'Challa's helmet and some 3D claw marks, you can actually feel them. And on the inside of the claw marks is this stunning metallic purple. On the side of the box, Black Panther, some more claw marks and a ton of texture. Then on the back, all of the warnings and legal info. Now you may be thinking, Justin, really do you need a second copy of this figure? You already have one. And actually, the answer is yeah, I think I do. I'm going to have one with the helmet on, one with T'Challa's head sculpt on, and one in the Black Panther display, and the other in either Infinity War or Endgame. Because in those two movies, this was the suit he was wearing. Back in the day when this figure first came out, I always meant to pick up a second, but... I never got around to it, and as we all know, this suit got really expensive really quickly. First, or I should say second in hand impressions, yeah, they're really good. What we are going to do now though is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first, which isn't quite as simple as it may first appear. What does that actually mean? Well, around the edges, we've got multiple connector points, a light switch, and a DC in. You'll see what all of that is for a little bit later. Up top, a Black Panther symbol and movie logo. I dig the juxtaposition of the matte texture and the glossy finish. Then up front, Black Panther, plus up top, a regular crotch grabber. It would have been awesome to also include a dynamic flight pole, because Black Panther is known to jump around, but... A regular crotch grabber, I guess it gets the job done. We do get one weapon in the form of this mini spear. It is made of plastic, although it's painted in gunmetal, it's suitably metallic. I like the texture for the grip, and it's painted well. We also have this rubbery piece that's supposed to be a tassel. I'm fairly certain this is the weapon that T'Challa uses to impale Killmonger, but... It's been a while since I've seen the first movie, I could be remembering that wrong. I'm fairly certain that if I did get that wrong, someone's already let me know down below. We also get two sets of eyes. You may be thinking, it's a touch weird, what do we need eyes for? Well, they're actually for Black Panther's helmet, and like I said, we get two options. One that's painted in this bright metallic silver, I dig the honeycomb pattern for the lenses. Then the other, that's just regular people eyes, they're T'Challa's. I do like that the surrounding skin tone is painted in black, so it kind of blends in with the helmet. Like when Batman pops on his cowl and his eye makeup, it just makes sense. Now, the best part about having removable eyes from the helmet is you can remove them. That means if you want to display him without the helmet on, he can hold it and have the eye holes completely empty. Technically though, Shuri did joke that he no longer has to pop on and off a helmet, so not super accurate, but if you wanted to, you could get that done. You may be wondering, okay, how do I actually install the eyes? Well, it's relatively simple. Hot toys include this bracket piece that they borrowed from BVS Batman. You then insert the eyes at an angle and wedge them in position. Now, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do on camera, but trust me, in person, it's a lot easier. When you slot them in, though, it looks something like this. I am curious to try out both options on the figure 
a little bit later. When this guy was first announced, a lot of people were really excited for this, the T'Challa head sculpt. This was the first time we got one, and the prototype looked incredible. But unfortunately, throughout production, it kind of lost the likeness, and we ended up with this, a subpar head sculpt. Now, I still like it. From certain angles, like right there, I can see Chadwick, but from others, yeah, you do tend to lose it. Now, technically speaking, it is well done. The hair is nicely sculpted and painted, the skin texture is good, I love the beard, but it doesn't really look like T'Challa. Now, compared to a custom head sculpt, this is by V. Collectibles, it's night and day. This is Chadwick, and this one isn't. Now, if you do want to find out more about this V. Collectibles head sculpt, just search the channel. You'll find what you're looking for. Then, of course, we do get the full array of Black Panther hands. Open palm hands with the claws retracted, claws out, so he's ready to do some slashing. I do like the silver paint. I also like the texture and the mix of finishes with the matte and the slightly glossy. We also get one gripping hand for the spear and some closed fists that come on the figure. But don't forget, like I said earlier, we do have some more to look at. When I reviewed this guy the first time round, I didn't have a ton of nice stuff to say about this thing, the display based pylon combo. Not because it looks bad or it doesn't function well. It is genuinely quite clever, unfortunately, the material choices are what lets it down. What do I mean by that? Well, these pylons look good, especially from a distance with this pattern in this super vibrant blue, but they're made of foam core, meaning on the inside is styrofoam and on the outside is printed cardboard. Yeah, you heard that correctly, this is cardboard, so it feels kinda cheap and nasty. There are some LEDs on the inside and a bunch more at the top, and you'll see what they do in just a second. Then down below, this is clamshell plastic. It feels once again really cheap, however, you can flip this around and pop the pylons on the back if you don't want them up the front. You also have a multi-directional power switch for on one and on two. On two is for the DC to USB cable, you can have it powered permanently. And on one is for the AAA batteries, so you've got choices. If you don't have a USB port in the cabinet, simply pop the batteries in and away you go. And lastly, there's just one more piece of the puzzle for the diorama, it's the backdrop. And I actually really like this, the print is stunning. It's T'Challa with the patterns illuminated in purple, a Black Panther logo up the top, and the entire thing is made of cardboard. You may be thinking, just Justin, aren't you pissed off that this is cardboard? You just ranted about the pylons. Actually, no. I'm perfectly fine with the cardboard here. It's nice and stiff and sturdy. Plus, it's going in the back of the display. It's not like you're going to be touching this very often. You also have some options. If you want this flat piece to be facing forward rather than angling back, you'd simply remove these side pieces, flip this piece going forward, then turn the the other way, and you can totally get that done. What we are going to do now, though, is get T'Challa himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And you know what? I freaking love doing these retro reviews because we get to sit down and reappreciate something that maybe we don't get to talk about very often, like this guy. I love this figure. Is he 100% perfect? No, don't worry, we've got plenty to discuss, but for the most part, yeah, he's pretty good. Now, starting off with the body, I love the way it fills out the suit. It looks so darn real. The proportions, the musculature, how the suit hugs the body, then the suit on top with the texture and the silver bits and pieces. It does pop in 1-6 scale. Up close and personal, kicking things off with the helmet first. Now, back in the day, when Marvel first showed off this helmet design, a lot of people immediately didn't like it. They said, what the hell? We'd just gotten pure perfection with the Civil War helmet, and I actually agree. I think the Civil War helmet is the superior of the two. 
But Marvel wanted something fresh and different and more Panther-like for a character called Black Panther. Yeah, this mask totally works. They took the cheeks and the snout area and the ears and just dialed it up to 11. It now looks way more feline. It's sleek and like I said, it was fresh and new. It does have a mix of textures with some great sections and some patterns, plus some silver incorporated into the mask as a nice pop of colour. If you are wondering what he looks like with the eyes switched out though for the T'Challa eyes, even I have to admit, being a Civil War helmet fanboy, this is really cool. Being able to see T'Challa's eyes behind the mask, it helps him emote and it humanizes the suit, something that the Civil War helmet could never do. But of course, he does come with the T'Challa head sculpt, and if you're curious what that looks like on the body, well, it looks something like this, and even though this head sculpt is far from perfect, I still like it. It's a display option I'm tempted to use in my collection. Now, something to be aware of is this. If I move his head sculpt, you can see, oh no, the suit is peeling. That's because this beard is rubbing up against his Adam's apple, causing friction and damaging the suit. So when you do pop the head sculpt on, please be really careful. Don't angle the sculpt too far down because you don't want those two pieces to collide and cause some damage like it has here. Now, I was more careful with my own copy and luckily that one's still pristine, but this is totally a possibility because that gap is really tiny. Also, when you slide the head sculpt on, his neck is quite small. It throws off the proportions just a little, but when you take a step back and look at the whole figure, I still think it fits the body well. Some people have said that the VDOT collectibles head sculpt is a little bit big for the body, and yes, okay, I'll admit it's maybe 10% too big, but... The likeness is undeniable. I was tempted to use that other head sculpt, but now that I'm seeing this again, oh, this is just way better. Unfortunately though, this head sculpt is really hard to come by, so our only hope is that the new Civil War 2.0 head sculpt is better than the one that came with this suit. Speaking of which, we do have to address the suit and the body, but we may as well do that together because they kind of go hand in hand. Starting off with the suit though, it could would have come across boring and bland, but it doesn't. It's rubbery screen printed fabric, there's a ton of texture to it and multiple patterns as well. You do have these 3D silver elements, such as up here for the necklace. This is what the suit forms out of in the movie. How? I don't know, it's vibranium, it can do whatever. You do have some stitching around the back though, but it's not super noticeable. From the front, it looks almost entirely seamless. One of my favorite things here though is the body. I've already told you it looks super realistic, because it does. You've got padding for the abs, for the pecs, the trap, are well defined but I absolutely love that you can get his arms super flush down by his sides something that you couldn't easily do with Civil War. That one was way bulkier and they kind of stuck out. This one, like I've said multiple times, is a lot sleeker. Coming down to the legs, the sleekness continues. They're nice and smooth. But that's not to say they're devoid of detail. They aren't. There's still plenty to look at here. You've got some musculature poking through the suit for the thighs, plus the suit on top does have a mix of textures and patterns, just like the upper torso. Down here for the calves, you've got multiple silver pieces glued onto the top. It kind of makes him look like he's wearing boots, but as we know, he isn't. He's wearing sneakers. On the underside of the sneakers, there's some tread sculpted in. Then up top, I like the little panther claws. It's a nice touch. Now, one thing that I don't love are these. What are those? There's some really ugly wrinkling at the ankles. Now, I understand why when you stretch the suit down, it looks a little bit more smooth. And they didn't want to copy the design from Civil War, where it was a separate shoe plugged onto the body. Now, I would have preferred a seam line rather than bunching at the ankle, because 
If you tilt it up, that fabric can be pinched in the joint and tear over time. So quite literally, it's more risky to have excess fabric rather than having separate feet that plug onto the body. As promised, here we have T'Challa standing in the diorama pylon display with the LEDs turned on, and even with the studio lights on, you can still see the patterns on the suit just a little. Don't worry, we will be turning the studio lights off because I'm pretty curious to see what that looks like, but this should give you a rough idea as to what this is going to look like in your display if you've got LEDs in your cabinets. However, if you don't, this is what that's going to look like in low light. This looks absolutely stunning. The patterns on the suit come to life. Now, granted, we're sitting quite far back, and this is running on battery power, so it's a little bit dimmer, but just take my word for it. When you get this guy and you power these pylons up and you have him standing there, this thing is 100% going to pop in the collection. Now, maybe if you overuse this, the UV can kind of subdue the paint just a little. But in saying that, even though mine is a pre-owned copy and we don't know how long this has been exposed to the UV lights for, the patterns are still showing up fairly well. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have Solo Movie Black Panther on the left and Civil War 1.0 on the right. Don't worry, when the 2.0 comes out, we will redo this comparison. Heck, we may even look at all three standing together. But for now, you can see a very clear evolution between Civil War and the suit that came after. The solo movie suit is a little bit taller, yet a lot skinnier. Now, I'm not going to deny that my eye is drawn by the Civil War one because he's on this big, chunky body and I love the helmet. However, often there is a difference between what looks best and what looks accurate and... It's kind of how I describe what's going on here. Even though I prefer the proportions of the superhero style body on Civil War with the bulky shoulders and the narrow waistline, it's simply not accurate to Chadwick's physique. I'd have to give that win to the suit on the left. At the end of the day though, it doesn't really matter what I think. My job is to show you them standing next to each other, give you my opinion, but you don't have to agree with me, you can form your own. On the right this time, we have Killmonger, who's a little bit shorter, but he's way bulkier. He's nowhere near as bulky as Civil War 1.0. He's toned down just a little, but he's still bigger than T'Challa. Next up, we have his sister, Shuri, and she is significantly shorter, as she should be. In Black Panther 1, she was quite short, but... Nowadays, Letitia Wright is a lot taller, so I'm pretty curious to compare this Shuri to the new Black Panther figure whenever that eventually releases. Throwing a random third-party figure in the mix, here we have the Panther Queen, aka Shuri, as the Black Panther. She's a little bit shorter than T'Challa, but thanks to the high heels, she's not overly so. I reckon they stack up quite nicely. Now, the suit doesn't really fit that MCU aesthetic. It's very busy. You've got the purple, you've got the gold, you've got the blades, but seeing as though we do have a new Black Panther in the MCU, until the Hot Toys figure comes in, this one's going to take that spot in my collection. Going over articulation, do bear in mind this is my personal copy, so I'm going to be a touch more careful. Starting off with the helmet, it's on a fixed neck with a double ball peg, but Hot Toys have done something clever. They've done a little bit of a cutout, so when you bring the helmet back, it goes up even further. Now there is some gapping, so it's not perfect, but I do appreciate the range of motion. Going forward to there, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there, they will go forward and back, butterfly joint at the shoulder that also hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow, plus of course a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg. The torso does crunch forward to there, going back to there, swivel as well as pivot side to side. The legs go forward to there, going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, double bend at the knee going past 90, a double ball peg for the ankle, plus toe articulation. Wrapping up on Hot Toys Black Panther, who is technically based off his appearance in his solo movie, although as we all know, this is the exact same suit he was wearing in both Infinity War and Endgame. 
meaning this was the last suit we saw Chadwick Boseman in on screen as T'Challa in the MCU before his passing. Does that immediately make this guy a 10 out of 10 home run figure? No. But to me at least, it makes him just a little bit more special. Now, starting off with the suit, it looks stunning. I love the patterns, the UV effect is awesome, although the styrofoam pylons, not so much. You also have that nice pop of silver on an otherwise very dark suit. However, it is made of rubbery fabric, and as we all know, rubbery fabric, it's a little bit more fragile. So if you're someone who goes crazy with your posing, please be careful. It's an older figure, it may be a little bit more brittle thanks to time and age, and rubbery fabric likes to stick to itself, peel, crack, and potentially tear. Like I said, fragile. Now, he doesn't come with a ton of stuff. He comes with the styrofoam pillars. Really don't love the feel of those, but they work well. You also get one subpar T'Challa head sculpt, which even I will admit is not perfect. I still happen to really like it, though. And a spear. That's it. You don't get the tribal or ceremonial mask from the Civil War version. You don't get the shield. You don't get anything else. So it's kind of slim pickings. Now, if you're sitting here thinking, ooh, Maybe I'll get this guy instead of that Civil War 2.0. Well, that decision is all you, my friend. I don't know which way you're going to go, but for me, this guy is it right here. Now, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. This guy was a pre-owned figure, my first time buying pre-owned from them, and aside from a little bit of damage on his neck, he's been pretty darn good. I have popped the link to Toys Wonderland in the description below. They do have installment plans and a reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.